Hola, boa noite, folks. Carl Munson here on the Good Morning Portugal Wine Club. Wow, what a night. Um, I think there was a great air of anticipation because it is this beauty tonight, this Portuguese legend that we will be experiencing. It had to happen at some stage. This is Tasting 18. I'm Carl Munson, uh, your host this evening, leading you through this tasting with my fellow wine ninjas who are joining us one at a time on the screen now. Penny's here. How are you, Penny? Hi, I'm fine, thank you. Been looking forward to this one. Can you contain your excitement? No, I'm really... <laughs> <laughs> Frank and Rachel also. Let's just uh, open out the screen a bit so we can see everybody. Good evening to you, Globe Trotters. How are you this evening? Not bad. How are you? Yeah, pretty good. Um, yeah, just been doing a, a, an Expats Portugal webinar on buying and renting property in Portugal. Uh, it, 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 it ran over a little bit, so I could do with a nice little glass of wine. It was a, it was a great session, um, so I've hot-footed it. I was going to take off my jumper to reveal a polo shirt, and I was going to wear my summer hat, which I've got around somewhere, just to create <laughs> the right vibes for this particular brew that we're tasting tonight. Uh, how are, how's everybody feeling about the Matthias Rosé tonight? Not honest. Honest. I'm not, I'm, I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to say anything. I'm just going to drink it with you because I want to enjoy it with you. Oh, I see. That says a lot without <laughs> saying anything. <laughs> what, what, about, what about you, Penny? What, what's, your, what's your prejudice about the uh, – in, in the wonderful 1971 promo film we saw, Matus, <laughs> Matus Rosé. Uh, I'm going to say Matus. And Gaz and Queenie are here tonight. That's a new name for you, Linda, tonight. Queenie. Because <laughs> I've got this big chair, it's like a throne. <laughs> and the royal wave as well, nailed that, fantastic. And funnily <laughs> enough, I'm led to believe that HRH uh, is partial to a bit of the old Matthias Rosé. Well, wow, uh, there you go. <laughs> alongside Jimi Hendrix, Saddam Hussein, Pope John Paul II, um, Rod Stewart, a number of people love this brew, um, which, <laughs> Frank, are you okay? <laughs> 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 He's so <excited> <laughs> um, I, I, I love it. You're, you're pumping it. You're pumping the market. I am. I am. I am. Have you have you got um have you got the pink object nice and cool tonight? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, because I want. Oh, look at you! Ice bucket as well. Is that is that you the green? I mean, fresh like. penny. <laughs> <That's Wow. amazing. laughs> Penny, can we see the bottle again? Is, is it pink or is it one of the old green ones? Oh, it is pink, right, okay. Oh, yes. Uh, no, I haven't got one of those lurking still. Not even as a table lamp? No. Okay, all right. Uh, Natalie's here as well tonight. My first trip to Portugal, I drank two bottles of this while sitting in Villa Mora Marina. How did that go? <laughs> did you end up in the marina uh, on a summer evening taking a dip? Okay, I want to just share with you, is Mr Perkins joining us tonight? Or, or is he? Um, is he cried off? Has he already drunk it and fallen asleep on his sofa? I wonder. Uh, Neil, where are you? And and Rita off camera as well. We want you both here. Uh, the Perkins is. Um, I want to share with you a little bit of history. Like I said, uh, Saddam Hussein. I think it was found in his cellar. Uh, HRH, uh, Majesty the Queen. I was watching a brilliant American video about Matthias Rose and this guy. I think he'd been in the wine trade for years. And he was saying, oh, um, yeah, we used to sell this back in the 70s. I think he was a cop and a wine, a wine liquor store owner. And he said, yeah, we used to sell this back in the 70s, um, but I've never tasted it. I'm, I'm tasting it tonight. And apparently one of the queens of England liked it. I don't know which one. And that, I mean, I mean, this is an old wine, but it's not that old. It's got to be HRH2, isn't it? It can't be Queen Elizabeth yeah. I or Queen Mary. But anyway, um, it does go back to 1943. Actually, it could have been Queen Mary, couldn't it? Anyway, uh, I'll, I'll just brush over my poor grasp of the British Republic um, and share with you some of the backstory, courtesy of the wonderful organisation that make it. That would be Sograp, a big corporation uh, of, uh, of uh, uh, wine manufacturing here in Portugal. So let me just whiz back to the top of this because this is fantastic. And you can see the old iconic bottle there. Um, whilst we welcome onto the screen, the stage, I was going to say, um, <laughs> Frank Theroux is here. Um, <laughs> you threw me there. Is that is that Mr. Perkin? <laughs> it, could have, it could have actually been Frank Theroux, couldn't it? Um, is that what was left up from last time? It is, isn't it? Yeah. You have to put that 
<laughs> we have to be really careful about checking these names because some of them get changed in the expat man cave. I will change that for you now, uh, Mr. Alan Tejo, who's just joined us. Uh, Anna says, I first bought a bottle of this 30 years ago. Fantastic. Uh, how are you, Neil? Two thumbs up. I always have a problem getting in for some reason. Oh, I say. Officially a no <laughs> drinking date, so later and I are sharing a half bottle so we can join in now as we're back in Portugal. Yes, of course. Well done, Paul. And uh, Facebook user here says, "My, tell us who you are. Uh, the wine my dad always used to buy, first one I ever tasted, and I still love it to this day. That is fantastic. Could be Julie Marsh, um, who really got me thinking twice about Matches Rosé. So let's go back to our presentation, shall we? And uh, you'll see on the screen there the delightful... Uh, flask shaped bottle uh, and this is really great the presentation they've got on their website at Sograb. Um that apparently is shaped like the old drinking bottles or the flasks that soldiers would have 1942 Portuguese company Sograb and its founder Fernando Vanzella Guedes launched one of the world's most innovative wines its striking image unique flavor and curious bottle have brought it fame worldwide I think what did I hear today 20 million Bottles worldwide a year in 120 countries. The unique and iconic bottle, as I said there, inspired by the flask used by soldiers in the First World War, has contributed to the wine's enormous success. That sounds a little bit naughty to me, doesn't it? It's like makes soldiers addicted to the Matthias because they like the shape of it that they're familiar with. Uh, this is the most... I'll do this in the sixth baronet English poet and critic, Sir Sasha... Sacheverell Sitwell uh, said, This is the most delicious Van Rosé that I've ever tasted. Matthias is delicious beyond words. It is a pity that one cannot buy it here in England. Well, that's changed since 1953. Uh, thanks to Fernando Van Zeller's Guidish's tenacity and innovative marketing campaigns, sales grew year after year across various parts of the globe. It was these campaigns, some based on partnerships with ambassadors and consoles in cities around the world, that resulted in Matthias conquering the USA Japan, Hong Kong, and Australia. And there, is, there he is looking like the Hugh Hefner of the Portuguese wine world, um, the biggest Portuguese wine across the world this is. Uh, there's our man, Fernando. Obviously doing the um, Ferreira Rocher style thing, but penetrating the embassies. Uh, from the world of entertainment to the world of politics, there were several celebrities who succumbed to Matias Rosé's success and quality. There she is, the Queen of Fado, Amalia, uh, with her bottle. There's Jimi Hendrix. How cool is that picture? I don't know who the lady is with Jimmy Hendrix there. He probably doesn't know who she is either. Uh, there's Steve Jobs. 1975, Steve, Steve Jobs was photographed at his office with a Matthias bottle. Can you see it on the shelf in the background there? Fantastic. And uh, Ace Fraley and Kiss, photo session of the album cover Alive, obviously based on uh, Jimmy there swigging it out of the bowl. My only regret is that when I flew around the moon, I wasn't drinking Matthias. Or should I say, Matus? Uh, no, I'll say, I'm going to say it in the best Portuguese I can manage. Mateus. Uh, Frank Borman, leader of the team of astronauts who first flew around the moon. What incredible product placement. Uh, Matus' uh, first became popular in the United Kingdom and enormously successful in the USA. I think this is on when uh, European wines were first being enjoyed in, in America after the Second World War. And in the 1950s, it became a truly global brand. By the 1970s, Sograp was selling in around 120 countries. Matthias was inclusively the most requested drink during the summit of the Organization of African Unity held in Lagos, Nigeria. You might need that in a pub quiz one day. Uh, so there we go. There is the founder and presumably with family there. Uh, Matthias' story is a legacy uh, sorry, it's, la it's largely the story of... I, I read my script wrong there. Matthias' story is largely the story of Fernando there, the visionary founder of Sogrup, and the man who dreamed up Matthias and brought it into being. A man ahead of his time whose ambition was to make the best wines in Portugal and introduce them to the world. Friends, I think he's managed to do that. He handed the baton to son Fernando Guedes, thus ensuring the Sogrup remained a family business. Through phases of growth and expansion, Sogrup became the force it is today, a group with a presence in in five origins, continents presumably, and over 1,000 employees worldwide. And there it is. There's the comparison of the old bottle and the new. And now, folks, we're going to try it. Are you ready for this? Have I pumped it enough? 
I'm, I'm salivating, <laughs> salivating. <laughs> I know you're a rosé man. I know you're a rosé man. Uh, so an exciting moment for you, Gaz. Um, Gary, definitely. Gary, in these times, in these times of, of uh, quarantining, how did you get that haircut? Did uh, <laughs> give you that one? Shall I give you a clue? <laughs> <laughs> Well, the great yeah, job. Really the um, yeah, Do first. You want to know another quick fact about it as well. Please, Penny. Yeah. Um, another useless fact, which I picked up um, today, that um, on Elton John's '73 album "Yellow Brick Road," there was a track called "Social Disease" in which he mentions Matthias. Getting really. Getting on Matthias. <laughs> Amazing. That, that, um, what, what a legendary brew. Mm -hmm. Let's, hope, let's hope it stacks up and meets all of that <laughs> adulation. Because, of course, he, he mentions vodka and tonics, doesn't he? In um, going to take you a couple of vodka and tonics to get you on your feet again. <laughs> Yellow Brick Road. Yes. Um, okay. <laughs> Uncorking. Uncorking. Now, I think what we need to do this, it must be cold. And it must be poured quite quickly because there's a little bit of effervescence that we want to catch. Everybody at home, are you with us? Anna, first bottle of this I bought in 30 <laughs> years. Uh, later, it's pronounced litre. Uh, thank you for that. <laughs> <laughs> what? Yeah, unbelievably. Oh, no, Lisa, Bacchiocchi. Couldn't find Matthias in a local store. I'm drinking the Casal Garcia Rosé Vigna Verde. Okay, that's a bigger export as well. At least it's Portuguese, and I've been to the Vigna Verde region. So there's that. Thank you. Steve isn't... Steve is still working, but Tammy is ready for the tasting. Fantastic. Steve is in position. Eric J. Good evening from North Carolina. Sadly, couldn't find the matches, Rose. Right. Right. <laughs> I'm with beer tonight. So let's go for it, folks, shall we? Um, I'm going to uncork. I decided to get the small one because if I didn't like it, I didn't have to drink the whole bottle. And there'd always be some. I got a, I got a packet of four. So there'd always be a bottle when Gary comes round. Well, that makes a nice difference for the packet of three. I guess it's slightly better, Gary. You can breathe yeah. with relief. It's not a packet of three. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you want to say that anymore? Okay, let's pour it and look at the colour, guys. Oh, you, some of you are already ahead of me there. What are we thinking of that colour? Oh, and the fits on it. <laughs> It's kind of it's kind of darker than uh, Gary's uh, little uh, rosé. Yeah, that's right. He's called it salmon. Yeah. Maybe. Salmon is the word. Yeah, well mm -hmm. said. Um, I have heard that it referred to as salmon. Tin salmon. Oh, on the oh, smoked salmon or just normal salmon? Tin salmon. Tin, tin salmon. Tin salmon. <laughs> it's got that John West colour to it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Red salmon, that is. Red salmon. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, yes. Dead, try it on. Dead try salmon. It. What have we got? What fruits, do, if any, do we have there? Got to be fruity, isn't it? Yeah. It's quite a dry smell to me, though. That I can't smell much. It's definitely not first, dry. First prejudice challenge. There, you're expecting something a bit sickly sweet, aren't you? On the on the nose from our previous prejudices. Uh, I, I was for sure. Uh, Anna is with us. Um, did not even need a corkscrew for the version you buy here. <laughs> Classy. Um, Greg is here driving for three days to Portugal. Didn't know what we would drink tonight, so I picked up the best vino in the shop. MOB Dow 2017. That sounds probably better than we've got, Greg. Although I probably maybe shouldn't have said that. Uh, got my bottle for 329 in Guarita. Uh, bargain. Because uh, we should factor that in. Steve Welton's getting strawberries on the nose. That's always nice. Mm. Uh, is it actually a wine? No nose, no taste. But it is, I suppose, pretty sensible, Neil. <laughs> okay so have you bought four of the 187 centiliter bottles yeah there was a special it yeah was a special don't... buy three get four and i thought i'll play it safe i didn't like it i didn't have to drink the whole whole bottle and there's always some there for guests you don't like or gary or three loves a bit of rose <laughs> <laughs> or three christmas presents now okay so let's, let's try it The scene is Club Tropicana. It's still summer. We're by the pool. <laughs> yeah, I know in autumn time autumn you're time. wanting you're you're wanting a, a serious red, aren't you? Here, ideally, on a, on a night like tonight. But please put this into perspective. I'm getting strawberry there. I'm getting a nice acidity to it, like a pleasant amount. Yeah, a bit of strawberry there. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. Definitely yeah. strawberry, right? 
-hmm. It's smoother. It's smoother than I remember. I remember it being, uh, like you say, a little bit sweet and and kind of a bit tanniny, but it's not anymore. Whether they've changed, they it. changed, mm -hmm. they changed it. I think they said it in the eighties or the nineties to yep, appeal to the drier tastes of people. Yeah, because after the war in America, the, I think Americans would have wanted something quite sweet, okay? Because let's say their collective palate might not have been as sophisticated, obviously, as the European wine palate, and it was a sweeter, more syrupy brew, I think. You know, it's almost like designed at the younger wine drinker. But I'm, I'm, get, I'm getting strawberries there. I'm getting refreshment. And also what I'm getting is a lot of silence from you guys. And... Like an contemplating the complexity of it, trying to get my head around it. Okay, uh, I'll sweet. Take a simple wine. Go on. I think it's sweet. No, it's not sweet. Definitely not sweet. No. I, I, I would say I, I personally would call it sweet. Um, for me, that's that's it's definitely not dry. Um, I would say it's uh, it's sweet for me. I've had a lot of rosé um, over the past few weeks just to because compared to different things and that's probably been a medium the, the the shaker was a very dry light one this is kind of a medium and we had one the other day that was so sickly and awful it went straight down the sink so um <laughs> it's it's about medium for me yeah yeah i i i i've definitely you know that scene is important the poolside the hot summer's day mm. i think it does have to be contextualized and that's what, what was his name, that wonderful man who, who led our tasting in Coimbra? Paolo. Paolo. I wasn't sure if it was Pedro or Paolo. Paolo, when we were, when I was trying to sort of have a little dig at him to see what he thought of Matthias Rosé, the, the big lesson for him was it's all about context. He said, this is, this is good, summer's day by the pool. And, and that was a big lesson for me. You know, mm -hmm. every wine has its place, I think is what he was saying. Uh, Frank, I'm really keen to hear from you, my friend, tonight. <laughs> giggling. I, I'm, just, I'm, just, I'm just surprised that what I tasted as a, as a teenager has um, tried to improve because it used to be very sweet. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, many years ago, and now uh, it's They've they've tried to hint some to add some sophistication to it, but I think they've kind of failed because uh, it's um, it it kind of tastes like um, it's got like a bit of a strawberry syrupy kind of taste to it. I don't know why I'm I'm, I'm tasting that a bit. I'd agree. Sure, That's okay. quite strawberry. Go on, Penny. It isn't as it isn't isn't as sweet as it was back in the early seventies because it was really revolting to be honest back then. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I'm quite I am quite pleasantly surprised, but it is still a bit too sweet for me. But I go with about the medium, I think here. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah slightly it's like, almost it's a little bit like um, being very. It's got a bit of effervescence with it. Yeah. I find it, it's too sweet for me. I find it a bit like fruit juice. Okay. I find it quite very simple. There's not a lot to it, really. Yeah, um, I think actually we've got a record. I've beat Frank. I've done a bottle already. <laughs> <laughs> you really hate it, but you've done a bowl. I don't hate it. I don't hate it. Would I? Would I? Would I choose it as a rose? No. Um, okay. We've had a couple of on here, which were better. Um, and the one I had from Sabroso uh, a few weeks ago was was amazing. Yeah. Um, I wouldn't choose it again. I I, I think it's. It's better than the um, that fizzy red we had. Oh yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, it's better than that. Uh, I, I, I'm, I'm Gary saying it. Maybe Gary's got a sweeter tooth than me. I don't know, but it's too sweet for me to buy and drink. I think. Um, it, it, I don't know. I, I just don't find there isn't a lot to it. Really, it just tastes a bit like something weak and a little bit fizzy and sweet. Is anyone getting, getting a lot? Is, uh, is anyone getting candy or a bubble gum or those those kind of that, that sort things? of thing, which is doesn't appeal to me? Yeah. Okay. Um, slightly artificial, not as sickly sweet as I was expecting, and very true about context, says Anna very kindly there. And Steve adding, uh, slightly dry for him and a bit effervescent. Yeah, I, that's what I'm getting for sure. Go on. Who who was that? Was that you, Rachel? Yeah. So I thought that it it tastes 
watered down. It's, exactly. It doesn't exactly. have any taste at all. It's pretty tasteless. Mm -hmm. It's hollow in the middle, isn't it? Once you put it in your mouth, you get that instant. To me, I get the instant sweetness. And then I yeah. get like this void. It's like, yeah. like you say, it's like water all of a sudden. It disappears completely. Yeah. And, and then I, I get a bit of effervescence. And then when I swallow it, I just get a tiny hint of dryness as it goes, as, as I actually finish it. Mm. A tiny bit of dryness yeah. as I finish it. So it sort of goes from sweet to hollow and absolutely nothing. Mm. And then a bit of dryness. Yeah. Yeah, yeah mm. I'd agree. If, um, it's, maybe if they had made it a little bit... Um, a little bit acidic to give it a little bit interest but uh, i didn't like it okay fair enough uh frank has something to add though i think i've i've, uh, I've looked in the in the label towards the back and it it puts all these different kind of foods that you can have this with and i kind of disagree with that it's it says uh, you can have this with fish, you can have this with pasta, you can have this with, what is this? Um, Which one was that? Sushi. Oh, pizza, pasta. No, oh, sushi. Ah, sushi. You can have this with a salad, you can have this with shrimp, you can have this with stew. They've pretty much covered uh, every food group there. Uh, <laughs> And uh, still, the, you can cover all the food group, but if if your wine is missing, then there is a problem. I think the pizza one is correct. If uh, you were to have, uh, like, you know, sometimes, I don't know about you guys, but I, I like having cold pizza from, uh, takeout pizza from the night before. Um, it, it, this one would go well with the cold pizza, I think. There's never any pizza left in our house for the next day. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I, but I don't think uh, Matthias, to be fair, are going to put that on the back of the bottle, are they? Goes well with tomorrow's pizza. <laughs> <laughs> it goes well with anything. Goes well with leftovers. Yes, yeah. I don't. I, you know, forgive them for not putting that on there, Frank. But I do get your point. Um, Gary's description sounds about how I remember it. Friends of mine gave me a bottle about fourteen years ago. I remember a sweet, a little thick. Yeah, that's the syrupiness, isn't it, that we all fear, I think, with, with Rosa. No acidity, I don't get really. Yeah, no, no right. acidity to balance I out the sweet. Really so. Glad it's improved. And, ah, yes, strawberry bubble gum. So maybe it's um, a starter mm. wine, a, a gateway wine. for. for I for think the... it's a teenager wine. I think it's a wine to get before you're legally able to drink wine. Yes. Which we, can't, can't, uh, which we cannot you gotta love it. It's going to be a bit like the Liebfrau Milch and Black Tower and Blue Nun. What in in the ice started our wine drinking journey on? This is this is like the Cub Scout wine wine guide, um, <laughs> Cub uh, Scout camp or whatever. Uh, at this point, of course, we do not endorse in any way anyone drinking uh, under the age of eighteen. Obviously, no. um, <laughs> in an unsensible sort of, manner, under sort of thirty represents, probably. if you like, that Britain's britain's journey with wine you know they yes. came in, most both came in as teenagers really no matter what age they were in as much as they were didn't have a very sophisticated palate in the uk yeah. mm -hmm. and had to be introduced in Canada, in Canada as well penny mm -hmm. i think i think this is this is the wine that took me down the road <laughs> well i was quite fortunate being brought up in an italian type family because i drank red wine as a child watered down so i actually used to drink red wine but all you could get in those days at a restaurant was Matthias or Blue Nun or Black Tower or Chianti, very watered down Chianti, sort of in a, in a straw basket type stuff. Amazing days. Or Val Policella? Yes. Oh, oh, Val Policella, oh, yeah. God, that was terrible. Yeah. Yes, indeed. Incredible. Yeah, Blue Nun. It was all about the marketing, wasn't it, and introducing people to, to wine. And yeah. it had it had to appeal immediately, didn't it, I think? Mm. I mean, haven't we come a long way? It's incredible. I love a pint of blue nun <laughs> <laughs> with loads of ice in it. Um, <laughs> perhaps trying to appeal too much to colour instead of leaving skins and longer for flavour, uh, says Steve. Yeah, that, you know that's that's a, that's a, a wine enthusiast comment for sure. There, Steve. Uh, you're obviously a sophisticated man when it comes to your wines. Um, and I, so, so I suppose we're not um, appalled or shocked. But we're not that impressed, and I wonder if it, if this had been presented to you without the without knowing the bottle, seeing the bottle, do you think your view would have been in any way different about this wine? 
Yeah, I wouldn't have been as polite. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone else? No, I don't know. No, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. It's, it's if like if you were to put that little rosé right next to this one without having a label on it, I don't know how most of us would react. Uh, either we would knock both of them uh, equally, or one of them would win. I, I suspect that Little Rosé might win against this one. Yeah. I, I think I would ask, is this wine or not? <laughs> <laughs> or a punt, something like that. It, it does benefit from the fizz, doesn't it? It would be worse mm. without the fizz, I think. Mm. Yeah. Well, that's that it as well. The, this, this is the strange rosé because it's it's almost uh, a spumante. Yeah. And <laughs> rosé is a very, very variable. Um, and to make a really good rosé, I think, is, is a very difficult task. And you can have a dry rosé. You can have a medium rosé. You can have a sweet rosé. And... It just depends what your taste is, really. Um, if you don't like a dry rosé, this might be your drink. Um, yeah. But so they have changed it in some way. Um, I, I, I can't quite put my... I think Neil might, might have put the, the finger on it. Yeah, it's, something's gone from it somewhere. It's lost that middle bit somewhere. That, that's, that's kind of what I'm thinking. Um, you, yeah. you get that initial taste and then, boom, it's gone. And you get a little bit of dryness. And that, that thing in the middle is gone and I can't think what the thing in the middle used to be. <laughs> I, yeah. I think it's a bit synthetic tasting. I agree with Anna actually, and the the synthetic taste seems to last quite a long time. Mm. You know, sort of like after I've sipped mm. it, that taste like lingers. Like, like, yeah. Sweet, yeah, like 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 the flavours in candy and sweets. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Would you mean like a saccharine sort of taste? Yeah, a bit like saccharine. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, actually, that's I, it. I, I agree that's with it. her managers, dude. <laughs> <laughs> yes, arise, Sir Frank. Arise, Sir Frank. Um, and I'm going back to the comment you made there, Frank. It's a bit my fair lady, isn't it? It's like you know, we 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 have an idea of what uh, Matisse Rose is, and she's been on a, a some sort of finishing school thing with the professor, but you still know it's her, even though she's going, you know, the rain, rain in Spain stays mainly on the plane, or whatever, however she does it in the film. You still know it's her, don't you? Um, underneath the finishing school yes. touch of the professor uh, so well well put frank i think um agreed the uh, acidity lingers on uh okay so, so, so i think roundly agreeing on, on on how we feel about this go on frank here's the thing if this wine was brought out like late at night when you've like had all everything good to drink and you've got nothing else left and this is there for continuity um i think that um, like a lot of a lot of a lot of people who just want to have a drink, this would be fine. I think this is good for like you know right about the time when like you know it's it's you want to send people home, and this one <laughs> this one this one would this one would would work. Well, you could actually say, look, here's your, here's your party bag. It's a bottle of matches rosé. Now go. Take it with you. <laughs> That's what Neil. You can do that with with your little. Um, just, this is all. This is all the wine we've got left, guys. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, brilliant! Uh, you know, apparently that one eight seven, which is a weird um, number, isn't it? The, the centiliters in that little bottle. There. He's got the presentation one. This is lockdown lonely wine. Apparently, uh, that's meant to be a portion for one person. I saw in a video. That that's three fifty mil. That was what two fifty. Two fifty mil. There is a there is a one eight seven apparently, which is or handbag size, uh, perfect for putting. What are you trying to say? It's <laughs> <laughs> definitely bigger, Neil. Clearly, yours is big. <laughs> I, I have been told that. Yes, I know. <laughs> <laughs> yes, um, but I, you know, I, I, it's about the marketing with this, isn't it? Twenty million bottles a year, one hundred and twenty countries. You know, we're not looking at fine wine here, are we? We're looking at an incredible international marketing success and an amazing Portuguese brand that's known all over the world. My hat it's is here now. Thank bottle. you. Have you is, it the first, is, it, is it the first rosé that was commercially produced? And I know it was uh, the biggest export. Was it one of the first rosés that was commercially produced? Uh, it's got it's got to be in that quantity, isn't it? Absolutely. I'm thinking if, if it became popular because because it was a, it was it was a new fashion, basically, 
you know, we had red wine and white wines, and all of a sudden there came this thing which was rosé, which is something in between. Um, and you've got the pop stars and the film, uh, you know, uh, film stars and everything else starting to drink this. Um, and it's like anything, you start to get a fad, don't you? It becomes fashionable. Um, whether they liked it or not was another thing. It was fashionable. Um, Absolutely. Maybe that, that was it. And it was something completely different. It was a very sweet pink wine. Yeah. And I, I think that that was a, very, a smart move with Fernando in the old days to put it through the embassies all around the world. You know, if, if people were going to go and drink it at functions at the mm -hmm. embassy, you'd be glad of it, wouldn't you? Chilled on arrival. You wouldn't be concentrating too much on the wine. You just want something to change the mood a little bit and, and, and break the ice. This would be perfect. And what a, a marketing coup that was. And he must have given it to loads of record companies as well. This is a, this is an incredible marketing success. And as Anna's saying there, I think you're right, Neil. The label says the original rosé. I think somebody wanted to add something there. Frank, you, did you, were you Frank. just, yeah. Now it's, it's, uh, I was going to add to what Neil was saying. It's, it's now it's, it's basically drinking. This wine is not about the content. It's, it's, it's about the reputation. So whatever reputation that they have built and still in Canada, in, in the liquor stores, you will see them in a lot of sizes during Christmas time. I think they sell a lot. Um, and uh, I think they do very, very well. So it's it's just about the reputation. It cannot be about the wine itself. So they've done an amazing job. And uh, it's if if we were today, if we were looking for Sograp to be watching this, I, I I would still I would I would still like you know give them a nice cheers. I think that you know if they want to sell send us some other stuff, it's good. What else do they do other than this wine? Well, funny you should ask that. Funny you should ask that because I can show you now. Um, they really have tried to – I mean, this is a marketing ploy, of course, isn't it, is extending the brand and the product life cycle. And, and there, there it is. There's the, there's the new version of the original, so not in the green bottle anymore. It, a very contemporary look with all the condensation on it. Looks fantastic, doesn't it? It looks perfect. And they've got straws in the bottle, so they're drinking straight from the straws, uh, straight they from the bottle. That's the one I was telling you about. That's the 187, and that oh. is handbag size. It's too late. It's, it's not a couple, is it? Well, it might it be a couple. Like this. It does look the same size as that, I have to say. Or does it? And, but it's two women, interestingly, isn't it? It's, you know, it, you, you know in, the, in the epic advert we watched from 1971, it was a man and a woman in white trousers going around Obidosh. Now it's a, it's a girl's day out on the beach, isn't it? Handbag mm. size, straw in the bottle. It's a, it's a different market altogether. Um, look, they have a Tempranillo as well, yes. because people know that 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 name, that grape, don't they? So they've gone with a Tempranillo medium sweet rosé. I mean, that's going to be sweeter than the one we're drinking, I think. And then you've got the sparkling brew rosé there. Look at that. Floral, delicate, and lingering. Uh, that reminds <laughs> me of some guests I've had uh, around the house. Um, Matthew's sparkling demi-sec rosé. Um, so these are the ones they might send us, Frank. I don't know if when they watch this video. And that one, look at that. Sparkling dry white uh, with the extension there. And it's interesting, isn't it, how they position these, these various combinations of people in terms of demographics. That's in a sort of punch bowl glass there, isn't it? Uh, or are they yeah. proper glasses? I can't see. Um, Matthias Sparkling Demisec and the Matthias Sparkling Dry White. And, you know, maybe the founder is is spinning in his grave seeing all this, uh, you know, a far cry from the original green bottle. Um, but this is what they've tried to do. They wanted to, you know, they wanted to extend it. They wanted to uh, extend its appeal to people all around the world here. I'd like to know the numbers that are sold now compared to 40, 50 years ago. Mm. I think, I think he was a marketing genius. And at the end of the day, they marketed something which was different, which was new. Which was chic, um, and then as 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 wine, as people start to discover wine and know wine a lot more, they probably realised it for what it was, yeah. um, and that they're trying to relaunch this. But the the fact that they've had to completely change the wine itself um, proves that I think that fashion of a sweet anything wine that's too sweet it really isn't that popular anymore um and so they've changed the blend of the wine maybe to try to try and fit in now with people's tastes or um those people that originally drank the wine now of our age and older um whether they're trying to attract them or not i don't know or whether they're trying to attract a, a new younger market it looks like by the marketing ads that you've just shown 
Mm. Um, are they going to be as successful this time around? I don't think so. I don't know if they've got the product. Um, that's just a personal thought. Um, well, I certainly wouldn't. But then again, young people tend to have sweeter tastes, don't they, when they Indeed. start drinking wine? Of course. <laughs> uh, to answer your question, I can't go back that far, but Matus sold 3.5 million cases in 1978, and it is uh, 20 million now, um, What uh, 42 years later, in 120 uh, international markets. So, as it says in this article from the Wine Economist, still crazy popular after all these years i mean this but, is then an... again, but then again they they're, they're selling it now more worldwide aren't they is a you know, more international market as opposed to a, a, a smaller market maybe i don't know maybe but portuguese people portuguese people won't knock this that's the interesting thing that's what that, paulo paulo wouldn't go there would he you know he made the context uh response rather than yeah yeah you don't want to be drinking that old rubbish and I thought that was an incredibly generous and, and wise thing for him to say. Uh, if you're interested, the grapes are Barga grapes, which is what uh, the, the, the fizzy red we did have. That's a Barga grape. Uh, so it's a blend of Barga and Shiraz. Only two grapes in this, uh, the, the Barga being the, uh, the traditional Portuguese grape uh, mixed up with some Shiraz there. Can so, I say something? Of yes. course you can. Please do. Um, quite recently, uh, Gary got a bottle of Matthias Rosé, but it was um, called Arganis. Arganish. Arganish. It wasn't on that list that you no. used to some... It was a new oh. grape that they're trying, Arganish, it's called. Oh, okay. And it All was right. a rosé and actually tasted much better than this. It was a much nicer flavour to the... Uh, the okay. yeah. So, so maybe, maybe they are trying to appeal to a, a more sophisticated palate as well. Yeah. Seems so. Yeah. Mm, okay. uh, the bottle looked quite posh, didn't it? It's got a nice styling to the bottle as well. So, yeah, they're probably trying to attract a, a different um, uh, clientele. Yeah, I, I think so. I mean, they don't need to, do they? That's the interesting thing. Uh, Anna says, looks exactly like the bottle I got here in Switzerland, a screw top, but a regular size. Uh, Lisa wouldn't mind trying the sparkling brew. Uh, is that how I say it? Brew? With, with a silent T. That's what I want to say. Depends if you're French. <laughs> <laughs> Which, of course, I am, as you know, Gary. So I will be. It's the aftershave. The sparkling. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, hopefully, it'll taste better than that. Um, various. Splash it on all over. You, you could do that, couldn't you? Um, <laughs> try that, Neil, before you go to bed tonight. Um, <laughs> open another one of those bottles, splash it all over, and see what uh, happens when you get into bed. <laughs> Uh, various champagne brands now also make ice versions aimed at younger consumers. Yeah, it's all about the marketing. And that's what we would, would expect, right, with, with So Grew Up. Uh, and, and this is the conversation we return to, isn't it? You know, we, we, we have tried the wines of smaller producers, specialists, people trying to do different sorts of things. Uh, and we've tried the wines of a few of the big producers here. When, when these guys are producing 20 million bottles a year for their 120 markets, it's going to be a bit like this, isn't it? You know, this is this. I'm so glad we did this tonight. We couldn't have a Portuguese mm. wine club without trying the Matias Rose. So I'm glad we did it. Absolutely. Shall yeah, yeah. we? So their target, their target market back then, what was a mature crowd? It was, I mean, the people you, you didn't see any adverts with the, the youngsters drinking straws on the beach or anything like that. It was all mature people. Yeah. Um, yeah. And they were, that's what they were going for: heads of states, pop stars, etc. As we said, now yeah. I don't think. Personally, I don't think you'd get a mature person unless we've got an extremely sweet preference drinking drinking the wine. Um, yeah. I think there's too much competition out there. We were saying before it was one of the first roses, probably. Now there's too many, too too much competition and too many variants um, that probably would suit a mature palate um, compared to this. I, I mean, you give me give me any of the roses we've had so far, and this would be last on the list from my choice. That's, that's just a personal choice. Okay, and let's bear that in mind with the scoring, because I, I, a little nuance we've got with the scoring here is like our personal score mm. and our score as a wine to stand up in a particular context. That That's what's become clearer to us, hasn't it, just recently? But you can't score it for someone else's preference. You can only score it how you feel. Oh, yeah, for sure. No, but I, I'm, I'm thinking more of context rather than, uh, you know, the, the, the comment I made about a DJ friend of mine who owned a record shop, 
you know, he would know what to, to serve to people in terms of their musical taste. Um, and, and, you know, in I, and the question I want to ask you, actually, you know, th this is this is a top export of Portugal. What would you do now if, if Portugal wine wasn't known internationally? Um, are you, and you, I think it was you, Neil, saying that, you know, that was a masterstroke to, to send this out. A slightly sweeter wine uh, to do the ambassadorial work. But it was new. It, it was yeah, completely it, new, and, that, and that he he had he, he had the upper hand there because it was something that no one had. I mean, if you start sending free cases of this to celebrities around the world and 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 world leaders and this that, and the other, and managing to get it into these summits and everything else, then it's it's seen in in the right places, isn't it? Well, um, that's my question to you. Along with uh, along with marks out of five, I want to know now. Um, what's 80 years later, what you would send abroad to make the case for Portuguese wine, okay? So along with your mocks out of five, Frank. I would, if, if the, the evolution of this wine, I think now should be that they can continue selling this because there's obviously a market for it, but the evolution for this one could be as a mixer. So yeah. like, you know, in, in, if, you're, if you're selling this wine overseas, you can do so many different things and forget about just selling this as a wine because then you'll be laughed out of the room. Just sell this as a, as a mixer um, so that, you know, when people are, 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 are doing different mixed drinks or like, you know, that fruity thing and uh, they, they throw vodka in it and whatever, they throw some of this in there and they just work this as a mixer. I think it would work very, very well. Not for a very like sophisticated palate, but it would work very well for like you know college parties and stuff like that. This would be a very good mixer. I I can see this working. Sell the experience, yeah. Sell the experience rather than the sophistication. Yeah, fair play. Really for a punch. Is that what you're saying, Gar uh, Sangria. Yeah. yeah, pretty much sangria. Yeah, you, you, you just this is it's this a party is, drink, isn't it? It's, it's is, easy going. It's, by, it's so disguise it basically. Yeah, yeah. It, it, don't call it a wine. Call it a call it a rosé mixer. Call it a why not? Yeah, and some aromatics, some aromatics, some yeah. aromatics, and maybe some Campari in there. Yeah, a bit of soda, maybe you'd be onto a winner. Do you know what yeah. I do? With this? I, it suddenly occurred to me. What I, 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 if I'd got another bottle, I'd try it. I would dump a load of ice in this. Yeah. I think that would send the sweetness down and the the the, the sharpness up, and uh, I think it would improve it. I'll tell you. I think it's too watery to put. I, I mean, don't get me wrong. In the summer, in the summer, we 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 put ice in our uh, in our white wine. Um, if we're drinking during the day and white wine having lunch, we'll we'll very often put ice in it. In in just a a not very serious white wine. Don't get me wrong. Just something like Vino Verde, for instance. We'll we'll put mm. put ice in it. I, I don't know, it's quite easy to do that. But, I mean, Ray said exactly, exactly the same as I felt, and Rita said the same. You take that first mouth on, you get that sweetness, and then you get this hollowness, and it just tastes like water. It's like everything just evaporates and disappears. Yeah. Um, and I don't think ice would do it any favours, personally. Penny, how is it with ice? It doesn't taste any different, except it's colder, so it's slightly... Um... More watery. Uh, less invasive on the tongue. <laughs> Have you got any cold pizza to go with it or not? <laughs> no, okay. Um, I do not do cold pizza. Have you got a glass of Prosecco on the side there as well, Penny? Uh, no, there's a, there's a little one in the fridge that might come out. <laughs> Anna, Anna agrees with you. Have a couple before you start on the real wine, don't you? <laughs> Good cocktail, I please. I back tonight. <laughs> oh, well done. Uh, mixer. Uh, I would have thought you'd have had a drink tonight after the Labour Party being in the news, but maybe we shouldn't go there right now. Uh, Penny, Penny, I think I'll try that, uh, says Anna, with Campari. So uh, that may be the way the end, the evening finishes uh, in Switzerland tonight. Thank you, Anna, for your commentary. Steve, I'm uh, going to ask you... Hey, have you finished that bottle already? Yeah. Well, uh, let's do some scoring then. So I need your marks out of five, and I also want to know what Portuguese wine you would send to the, the embassies of the world to make the case for Portuguese wine. Maybe start with you, Penny. Um, well, it pains me to say it, but probably a two. <laughs> now, however, for the bottle, can I, can, I, can I digress? For the bottle, I'll give it full marks because it's a very sexy bottle. Is it Because I was trying to explain this bottle shape thing to um, Louisa earlier on. You know how female deodorants are shaped in a certain way? Um, is, oh, yes, is, 
Uh, they really are. They really are. And I can't be the first person to have remarked upon this um, in how um, interestingly shaped uh, female deodorants are, especially the roll-ons, obviously. Um, and, and, and so this bottle, is, it has this shape for, for a similar sort of reason, do you think? It appeals visually. Well, I mean, I, I love the form. Yes. What, yeah. what, I'm not going into what form it is, but I love the form. It's beautiful. <laughs> Enough said, but a two out of five. Two out of five. I can't. I don't know enough about Portuguese wines to say what I think they should export, but I have but to say, I mean, as far as an export goes, that has been a massive success. We, we, I mean, they get the last laugh every time here, don't they? <laughs> so grow up, don't really care what we think yeah. because it is incredible <laughs> business for them and, and good luck to them. Uh, let's go to Lisbon, Rachel and Frank. If you are in Lisbon. <laughs> yeah, we are. Okay. Um, okay, true. <laughs> okay. Is that all you wish I'll, to say? I'll be I'll be slightly generous. I'll go one point five. <laughs> okay, oh. one point five oh. And you two, what would you send to the embassies of the world to say, look, check us out now? You may have received Matches Rose back in the seventies, but check this out now. Well, this, uh, when we went with Neil to uh, the, uh, the, um, uh, the the winemaker over there, um, something from there, because they had this very interesting concept about um, uh, the different uh, steps or Act 1, Act 2 and whatever. And they had uh, quite a few different options. Uh, almost any of their wines, it's a very good winemaker. I'm quite sure across the country there, there are many winemakers like that. Okay, excellent. I, I'd send I'd send the Antonio Massanito one. Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. That'd be quite <laughs> a big bill, way. though. Yes, quite a big bill. And, and Penny wants that delivered by hand. Yes, uh, from the, from in from person. the winemaker. <laughs> yeah, in person. Um, over to Alvazra, your marks, please. Good evening, um, Alvazra. Um, it's not the worst one I've had. It's not the best one I've had. I prefer their other one. Um, was it difficult? Um, three, <laughs> three, three. Okay. So, three. Uh, how, many, how many glasses, Queenie? Three, three glasses. <laughs> oh yeah! Oh yeah! <laughs> <laughs> That's always the subject. I well, love it. Good. For a rose? No, for anything. You know, to, for... uh, not this. <laughs> Um, uh, I don't know really. Um, perhaps the shaker rose. I like that one. Yeah. Um, right. I'd, I'd, I'd send. I would send a bottle of uh, Mulevaya, um, because that only costs two and a half quid, and it's just pretty damn good stuff for the price. So you put two and a half euros. It's it's just pretty good stuff. What? Who's the maker of that? Is that Ashbaral? Ash I don't know. Um, no, I don't think it's Esperel. It's, um, oh, it's, it's, I think it's from down um, south of Lisbon Way, somewhere Set around there. Setbal. No, I think it's okay. Setbal, set somewhere around there. It's, it's a Lis Lisboa wine. All right, That's fantastic. Uh, thank you for that. Tammy, uh, over there in the States, Steve and Tammy. Tammy says four for interest. Yeah, for the experience, I guess. And wine itself, two-ish. Oof, says Anna in Switzerland. Maximum two as a wine, as a mixer. Let's see. Let us know how that goes. Um, and Joe just reporting in on you. We're on YouTube tonight, guys. A bit different for us. We are live streaming on YouTube. Uh, and I'm surprised the comments haven't been more savage from YouTube, um, the Twitter of the live streaming world. Uh, but from Joe, good afternoon, your evening from the Pacific Northwest Seattle area. How lovely. We raise a glass to you over there in Seattle. Um, we're gonna have such a good week next week, <laughs> or some interesting programs in the evening. Um, Neil, to you out of five, and what would you send abroad these days? Um, probably about three. It, was, it wasn't, it wasn't terrible wine. Oh, well, wow. good wine, but there's some people would, would like it. Um, it, it's been going all these years, it's still going strong. It's got to have something about it, it just isn't for me. Um, yeah. <laughs> so. I think a three. Would a wine I send away? Maybe a Peramanca from Cartusha, um, which is, I've not been able to afford a bottle yet. Um, <laughs> uh, Esperau, any big red from the Alentejo was my preference, really. 
I love those um, Cartusia labels. They're beautiful, aren't they? Re really nice graphics on, on, on there. I'm sure the wine's good too. Um, Lisa agrees with you, Penny. Um, me too, Antonio Massanita. <laughs> I mean, what is he with? He's got a face like a bag no. of spanners. I don't understand it. I really don't. Have I got to share him? No. <laughs> you, looks like you do. Looks like you do. Um, for me, I'm going to go with a similar t to you, Neil. I think three. I've got to give it some respect. Um, it's not the sort of thing I would buy again. I mean, you know, we 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 are in a sea of of beautiful wines in Portugal. There's no need to buy this again, is there? Except for some sort of, I, I'm not going to say special occasion, but a particular occasion. <laughs> you know, where where. <laughs> <laughs> you know, when so Gary comes round, <laughs> like a seventies party, the king of the road, yeah, seventies party, yeah. or as a bit of fun, you know. When so, I mean, somebody bought me a bottle for my birthday a couple of years ago. Like, it's a bottle of Matthews. You remember it from the seventies? And I said I pretended I didn't, and I'm too young for that. Um, but it's it is a it's a novelty wine in 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 some sense, isn't it? And it's also not disgusting. That's the other thing. You know, I'm I'm so over myself with my snobbery about this. It's moved from, you know, a, 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 a misplaced snobbery to it's just not my cup of tea. It's, it stands up. It's fine. It is Matthias Rosé. It just isn't my cup of tea. And I, I need to dispense with the prejudice and the snobbery. And I'm glad we've done it from that point of view. Um, Anna says, I prefer a Vigna Verde as a poolside, easygoing one. And I do like most of the Portuguese reds I've tried. So I'd send any of those. Um, yeah, the Alvarinhos, of course. Has anyone tried Barça Velha? Do we go there? Do we go there at some point soon? Um, and Lisa Bakioki, uh, nostalgia, yeah, for a bit of nostalgia. One, I mean, you could have a spag bowl with a glass of matches rose with a black forest gato to finish, I, and you know, it would, it would just be like Abigail's party, wouldn't it? Or some, you know, some 70s fallout with people who are coming round, chuck all the keys, chuck all the keys in an ashtray, have a 70s night in, perfect, a prawn cocktail to start. Prawn cocktail or melon yeah. and ha melon and parma ham. Yeah. And, and a proper seventies dog that sort of drags itself across a shag pile carpet and then humps somebody's <laughs> leg. Happy times! It would just bring all those memories back, uh, you know, of those oh. wonderful times. You've been to my house. <laughs> I've been to your house. <laughs> I was that dog. <laughs> I gave him a kick when no one was looking. Okay, thank you, everybody. That has been a lot of fun tonight. We're up. We're we, we've done our hour. Um, I, I thought there wasn't going to be that much to say about this. I mean, in some ways, yeah. You, you, there's the whole history of it, but uh, you know, I, I didn't think people would have that much to say. Yeah, like it, don't like it, whatever. But thank you all for 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 um, going there, <laughs> as it were. Um, and it's you know, it, it's 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 it ticked off our list, and I think we were obliged to do it as a wine club absolutely um and two only from us says paul uh send soalera alvarino to the embassy yeah uh, i'm with you on that yeah that you know the alvarino is going to be a is going to be a um a crowd pleaser isn't it so, that's that's the modern matthews i think isn't it send that away to the embassy to show how brilliantly we're doing in portugal crisp upbeat light-hearted and refreshing you know that is portugal in a bottle bit like yourself not unlike myself <laughs> <laughs> fabulous thanks folks should we leave it there or did, did, does anybody want to make any sort of um parting uh compliments or um gestures or insults or anything of that nature i just can't believe we got through the evening without mentioning talking about 70s wine without even going down the road of shag pile i i did it. i squeezed it in at the end didn't i Oh, did you get shag pile? Yeah, I, it was my vision of the dog dragging himself across the shag pile carpet, <laughs> which is you know, you know, like a specialist it. cleaning job. Uh, I'm, I'm, it, actually, in the 70s, or oh, it might have been the early 80s, I remember being at a friend's house, and his mum and dad had a proper 70s uh, front room. So you didn't spend much time in there. You were in the back room watching telly. And then they had you know, long, long sofas or settees, I think they probably called them then. They had smoked mirrors in the alcoves. <laughs> And they had a, and they probably had all kinds of fabulous art, like that involves swans and elephants and naked people, um, and candles, obviously. And me and my mate were messing about with this candle, and I dropped a red candle into the shagpile carpet with all its wax. And I really wasn't a very popular fellow uh, with his uh, mother after that. 
Um, but I think blotting paper and an iron sorted it out, if you need that tip ever. Yeah. Uh, thank you for a fun <laughs> evening and <laughs> agree <laughs> with the Alvarino. So, yes, that's what we suggest to the um, the consulates all over the world from the Good Morning Portugal Wine Club. Send them Alvarino. Uh, you know, you, we used to send them Matches Rosé, send them Alvarino, and uh, that will be an amazing um, bit of diplomacy, I think. Thanks, folks. Been great drinking with you. Ciao, ciao. Bye, everybody. <laughs> <For a mute, laughs> muted, <laughs> muted Matthias <laughs> evening. You know, I think I do tipsy in a particular kind of way, in a way that I think I'm going to get acid reflux fairly soon and incredibly hungry and need to eat loads of cheese and bread. Anyone else feeling like that? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> there he is as well. Take care. Bye for now, everybody. <laughs>